from Maui, how y'all doing? I promised you an extended version on uh, the real basics of slide guitar. And you know, it, it, slide guitar is a funny thing. I mean, a lot of people really dig it, but some people are intimidated by the whole notion of playing slide. And so what I'm trying to do with this series of lessons is to try and demystify the whole, the whole thing about slide guitar and, and give you some basic tools to start having fun right away with it. That's my main goal, okay? So I'm, I just, I woke up this morning, it was this beautiful Maui day, and I thought, I'm gonna get out in the yard. I've been doing them on my porch, so hit it and quit it stuff. And I thought this is the perfect day to, you know, look at this guitar, it's got like a Hawaiian motif on the back, right? It's a, it's an old national that I had made at the National Guitars for me. And, it's signed by John Lee Hooker because he and I did a duet together back in the day. I was fortunate enough to to get together with him through a series of amazing events. Hey, you hear the birds singing? So back to slide guitar and uh, and the blues and beyond. <laughs> um, so what I've been talking about a couple of real basic things. One is okay, what kind of slide do you use? And when you find a slide you like, what finger do you put it on? Well. That is definitely a matter of taste and also, you know, how, what your ear likes and what your, the weight you like and all that. I will say though, for the purposes of today, since I'm on an acoustic, uh, because I'm gonna give a, a full on lesson uh, at jimmydillon.com, uh, like an hour lesson on slide with everything you can imagine from electric to acoustic, but that's a different thing. But today I thought, gosh, if I was playing slide or I wanted to play slide, what would I need to know from the very, very beginning? And a couple of things that I talked about in my hit it and quit it lessons. One is, you know, the action of your guitar. You'll see, I don't know if you can quite see, but the action's fairly high here. But it's not so high that it's a struggle for me to play chords. I can still, no problem. A little bit stiff and I tend to use uh, heavier gauge strings. Again, that's a, uh, that's a matter of taste too on how heavy you want to go on the strings, but we can discuss that at some other time, probably in my longer lesson. But what I what I wanted to approach a couple of things is so I play it on my pinky, okay? That's just the way it ended up being, and there's several reasons for that. One reason is I wanted to have the freedom to chord with my other fingers to lit, do licks, because oftentimes you know I'll be playing either solo or I'll be playing with a band, but I still need to cop some rhythms. Whether it's Keith stuff, you know, or whatever. Uh, so that's my preference. Now I've noticed, gosh, I, I'm trying to remember Bonnie Raitt. I think she's either on the third or the second. I can't remember, but you know, everybody, some people like it on their third finger because it, it gives you that sort of, might feel more comfortable. Some people I've even seen it on the second finger. That one, I don't know. That's not me. But I'm okay on the on the pinky because again I can I can, I can make chords around it. Um, now the other thing is what material do you want to use? And I'm not going to get into all the various materials because there's brass and steel and ceramic and glass and of course Eden bottle. You know Dwayne Allman used a use a course eden bottle and uh i i like this is glass i like glass i also like a shorter plexiglass sometimes i like this one a lot because i like the weight i like it weighty because i like to be able to get a little sustain so what do you use glass experiment you know, there's lots of slides out there there's a mud slide that's ceramic that one I kind of like because it's got a grainy interior it grabs my finger so I'll sometimes use that I'm, I mess around I do and when I play electric um, sometimes I'll play sometimes I'll play with a glass slide and sometimes I'll play with a metal slide just depends on 
the application and the guitar and all that and pickups. So back to basics though, the purpose of this particular lesson is to get you going on slides. So, you know, you think you got the finger you pick, whatever one is that you choose, and then understand, and this is another basic sort of maybe unknown about slide. Normally when we play guitar, we play between the frets. You know, we call it fretting, but as you can see, we play obviously between the frets. And that's what we're used to. Well, you have to sort of throw that out when you play slide because with slide guitar, we actually play over the fret, A. And B, we don't, when we, when we play slide guitar, we don't actually press down and make a note like that. What we do is we float on the strings, and instead of fretting, we float. So that looks like this. And you have to, you have to have kind of a finesse touch to do that, you know, to, to get used. It takes some getting used to, right? So when you're first doing it, it might sound out of tune and weird. That's okay, because that's normal. But in order to play in tune, there's two things you need to, to realize. One is that we have to play over the fret. So if I play, if I'm playing a, a what's actually a C chord, which is the fifth fret uh, in open G tuning, which I'm in, D, G, D, G, D, D. I didn't mention that, I'm sorry, in the beginning, but you probably grasped that by now. I like open G as a starter thing, because you can get lots of stuff out of it. But back to, um, back to playing in tune and, and like that. So if I just, if I was thinking, oh, I, well, I normally would play a, a fretted chord in, in between the frets, that's not gonna work for you because it'll sound like this. No, you wanna be here. That's your, that's your four chord, your C. Over the fret, see, I'm over that fifth fret. So when I talk about the fifth fret, I mean literally over the fifth fret. And the other thing is you need to use your ear because, you know, it's a slippy slidey thing. And that takes some getting used to. And then, um, yeah, so it's, you're floating rather than fretting. And you gotta be real smooth with it. And you can see, you can see pretty clearly, I think that I'm going over the 12th fret. That's an octave, right? So in, in the blues, we um, we generally could do one, four, five, you know, which is a one would be a G chord, in this case, an open G. And then the four chord, which would be a C, is the fifth fret. And the five chord, which is uh, a D. Now, the cool thing about playing an open G tuning is when you play that five chord, you can hit that open D. That's kind of a nice luxury, isn't it? You can bend it. And then back to your C. And that, by the way, that little bend was, I just did a, a, a second fret bend. Kind of a rock and billy thing. And then to the D, is your five. And then to a C, and open. So I, I talked about the most simple as I was trying to think of like, what are the easiest licks to learn once you get the feeling of putting a slide on your finger and, and the idea that it does float and you gotta go over the fret, that's a lot. And, and the one thing I'll, I'll, I'll throw in too at the same time is the muting aspect. Now this one is kind of delicate and it takes a long time to get. So if you don't mute, I mute with both my right hand and my left, and most people do. It'll sound... You'll get a lot of noise, a lot of strenuous noise, extraneous noise. You don't want that. So now watch the difference between that and when I mute. I'm going to mute behind the slide with my first finger. I barely touch the strings, and it all moves together. So watch. finger is muting my first finger barely touching the string now I'm also sometimes muting down here I'll grab the strings now I'm 
I'm doing an extreme muting there, obviously. I'm, I'm overemphasizing it, but I wanted to show you. See, see how I'm, I'm, I'm palming it with my palm, and then sometimes I'm grabbing it with my thumb. And I'm, I'm muting. So I don't want to go too deep into this because this is more of an advanced technique. But I do want to mention it because if you if you do the look I'm about to show you and you don't understand muting, it's going to sound not too bad. That's, that's okay. And sometimes you want it to be all raucous and noisy and gut buckety. That's fine. But if you want it to be a little more tasty, you want control. So that's obviously an old Muddy Waters, you know, Willie Dixon lick, uh, Hoochie Coochie Man, one way of doing it. And so you're going to the five, open G, to the five, to the three, to open. Here's your drum. That's your drum, your shuffle. Cool. You got it? Play along. Don't forget to mute it. Now when you're doing that, you'll notice, uh, you probably notice I'm doing a little bit of vibrato there. That's expressive on the one hand, and it also is a way of it's a way of working around the tuning so that, you know, vibrato sometimes if you hear a singer like Elvis Costello or, or Elvis for that matter, they do a wide breath. Ah, 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 I'm exaggerating, but it kind of, it doesn't really commit to one thing. It wavers. And that's true also of slide. Now you don't have to use vibrato, but you know, you can just play clean. But if you want it to be expressive, and that you got a little wiggle there. So again, that's that's down to I talk about the four T's: touch, tone, time, and taste. They all apply here. You want to be in time. You want to have a good tone, and that. That comes down to the way you, the, to some degree, the way you approach the strings, the way you attack. Now, in this case, uh, and we're jumping into a little bit different area here. So, if you got that lick, now let's go up to the twelfth. So, if you jump up to the twelfth fret there, that's your third move, right? So it's. Remember that little, I showed you guys a little turnaround on a couple of lessons ago. Which is basically, I'll do it without a slide. You're working on uh, your high B and your high E and you're just down, up, down, up, down, up, open, down, up, meaning down, up, down, up, down, up, could be a pick. But what I want you to do with that lick here is uh, I want you to move it a little bit quicker instead of going down, 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 I want you to go down, 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 like this. Can you dig that? So let's put that together, if you will, with uh, the, the lick itself, then up to the 12th fret. And then do the little walk down. And then we have this complete like moment, right? Blues moment. If you want to get really fancy, here's the special sauce. Same lick. But up to the uh, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15th fret, 14th, 
13th, 12th. Now that's a little bit advanced because you're way up there. So don't even worry about it if you can't do it, if you're un unsure about it. But I wanted to throw it in because now what we have is with this little muddy waters thing, we've got a whole kind of moment where we can just jam. There's the rhythm. Okay, here we go. string and the third fret on the G string on open E open D. Open G third fret G. Then I ended on a D uh, G seventh. So if you hit that uh, third fret on the high E string, you're now at a, a, a G seventh. And just remember I chose open G tuning because I think it's a really easy way to um, get comfortable with slide. Uh, I used to teach a music program called Blue Star Music Program for kids. And sometimes we'd get people that barely played guitar or they're just getting going on guitar. They might be good piano players, but for whatever reason, they, they were new to guitar. And I would put them in G tuning. We get a bunch of acoustics and put it in G tuning and we'd show them not on slide, but we just show them with their fingers, you know. Well, most people, if you have any strength at all and any rhythm at all, you can cover that, you can bar that thing. It might be challenging, but. And so that was one of the ways that we were able to get uh, someone who's new to guitar up and running and having fun. Because that's like the reason I teach all this the way I teach it. Um, there's a, there's teachers out there that are really, you know, way faster than me and, you know, can shred and play a million notes a second and can like do Eddie Van Halen stuff and all that. Um, but if that's your, if that's your, your jam, that's cool. They're out there. I don't think you would be watching me if that was what you want to do. <laughs> I'm more of a rootsy player and I just wanted to talk about real quickly the slide players that I admire over time and some of them you've definitely heard of some of them might be new to you and i i hope they are because you can look them up on youtube and and thing so i wrote it down inside but let's see if i can remember it so immediately i got to go to Dwayne allman obviously allman brothers you know with that wake up mama and my history there is um uh Dwayne allman's heir apparent is a guy named Derek trucks which i'm sure you've heard by now and Derek Trucks, uh, when he was a young man, very young man, he studied in uh, Marin County, where I'm from. <laughs> and you'll laugh at this if you don't know it. He studied at Ali Akbar Khan School of Music. And Ali Akbar Khan was the preeminent Sarod player in the world, meaning he, he was at the Ravi Shankar level, okay? Alaraka, Ravi Shankar, Alaraka on, on uh, tablas, and, um, and, and Ali Akbar Khan on Sarod, which is a lot like slide. It moves up and down. Kind of like a fretless guitar in a way. So Derek, it's, just a, side, it's a side road, but Derek uh, studied there, and that's how he gets a lot of that. You know, when he does that Indian stuff. Those little quarter tones. Of course, of course, Derek has a way of weaving it into the blues and rock that's just stunning. And I'm, I'm a big fan of his. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, in, in more of a purely like fat, you know, gutsy, like um, soulful side, I got to say Ry Cooter, man, because Ry, Ry will never do anything wanky or, or too busy. He just won't. It's just not who he is. But yet he's done some of the most memorable things. He did a solo on um, a song called Mid uh, Lipstick Sunset by John Hyatt. That's one of my all-time favorite. I have to dissect that solo sometime for you guys, but it's it's just a beautiful solo and it do, it takes its time, you know. 
and then you know you got obviously the you know you know the, the blues guys you know muddy and 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 all the, the people the sun house people that came before uh, way before but i'm gonna get more into the modern um slide players i gotta mention sonny landreth because he is very inventive he plays with everybody from mark knopfler to to his solo stuff he actually toured with john hyatt and I did a, a few gigs with him. And when I did, I was noticing that, you know, the way he sometimes frets behind the... Almost sounds like a Zydeco. I thought that was really cool. But he he's playing on an overdriven, like a Strat with, you know, quite a bit of amplification. So he's able to get the touch and the sustain that you need for that. But I wanted to mention him. And then I also wanted to mention Kelly Joe Phelps. If you don't know Kelly Joe, he passed away recently. Phenomenal singer, songwriter, slide player. Um, some of these guys, um, Harry Manx is another one, M-A-N-X. I love him, check him out. Um, some of these guys, the slide is an accompaniment for what they do. One of my top guys though, I gotta say David Lindley, you probably know him, he's from his years with Jackson Brown. But he's a guy that that is just a a wizard. You know, he plays um, he plays lap steel, an old funky lap slide guitars, and then he also plays a Weisenborn, which is a, a beautiful acoustic version, um, both baritone and regular. The thing I like about David Lindley and and Rye is they're both super exotic. They play lots of different tunings. Another guy I like was Chris Whitley, who's passed, but um, I'm a big fan of his. So I mention these guys because um, they've they've sort of um, influenced me along the way. I, I I generally take what from whatever slide player I, I love, or guitar player for that matter, because I'm a singer songwriter by trade. Um, that's what I do. I've done a bunch of CDs and I've played a lot of sessions over the years and toured with Clarence Clemens and a lot of other people along the way. And the Robert Cray Band was my backing band on all my all my CDs, but that information's available on my website, jimmydillon.com. I just wanted to, you know, kind of have a conversation with you guys about slide guitar, but also about the reason I teach and the reason I'm here. And it's basically because I've spent my life, you know, on the road, in the studio, so writing songs, and primarily, first and foremost, I'm a guitarist. I'm a guitar player, that's it. You know, I, I love to sing. I'm an okay singer, I think. I'm pretty good, I'm a pretty good songwriter. I've written some pretty good songs and continue to do so and had the great um, good fortune to play with a lot of fabulous musicians in the Bay Area, mostly. But the reason I'm here today is is actually to share what I've learned along the way and pass it on to you guys. And if I can inspire you to play, whether it's slide or whatever it is, I have a fairly wide uh, palette. You know, I, I play open tuning, I play slide, I play electric, acoustic, uh, 12 string, whatever. I try to kind of play whatever's needed, right? As when somebody calls me for a session, I'm kind of a Swiss army knife in that way. So that, that appeals to me because I want to be a, I want to be a, a well-rounded musician. That's my goal. So that's it for today. I told you a few stories, but um, I, I hope you got something out of that slide lesson because if I can inspire you to at least try slide, I think my job would be would be uh, well accomplished, okay? Because, you know, you may like it, you may not. It's not for everybody. But if your ear tells you that, that it, it, it's, a, it's a turn on for you, that's great. And, you know, um, I, think, I think it was John Mayer that said he was talking about Derek Trucks' slide playing. And he goes... Derek Trucks, when he plays slide, it sounds like a really great R&B female singer or soul singer or, or blues singer like Etta James. And he does, you know, because the slide, it, it sometimes sounds a lot like the human voice, you know, because there's no break in it, right? You know, a lot of times when I'll play slide,
from Maui's slide lesson. I know we rambled on for a while, but I hope you get something out of it. And I got to say, I'm really enjoying um, my little uh, Instagram, Facebook, you know, little sampler videos that I'm that I'm doing lately because I'm getting a ton of feedback from you guys. And that that's really where I learned. Honestly, you know, people say, oh, did you know that so-and-so, that song you played by the Stones is actually written by a Reverend Gary Davis or whoever. Man, it's like people are, we all have our own little book of knowledge, you know, along the way and people we love and people we've studied. So for me, it's so fun to, um, you know, connect with you guys. Connection is what it's all about for me and, and sharing what I know. And honestly, it, you know, I just do it for the love of it. I'm, I'm really doing this because I love doing it. And uh, especially since, you know, the, the years we've lived through lately, <laughs> being unable to sometimes be one-on-one -on -one with people, although I have you know a number of students here in Maui that I teach one-on-one, -on -one. Um, to be on, on this on this way, you know, to do it this way is really cool for me because uh, I sort of reach out to the world sitting on a little island in the middle of the Pacific. How cool is that? So thanks a lot for coming by today. Um, I know I rambled on, but I hope you got something out of it. And uh, check me out. Come and visit us at jimmydillon.com. I got lots of cool stuff, my music, and um, a, a blues musical I wrote called Ascension of the Blues and got some videos with Carlos Santana and Lisa Fisher and all my heroes that I've had the good luck to play with over the years but most importantly me and Stacy right here man I mostly just sit on my porch and play with my cat my cat Luna and play with Stacy and it's quite a bit of joy out of this instrument so I hope you feel the same and we'll see you down the road Aloha